Well, there's the second round of bantamweight, and this is quite an interesting contest here. We have the champion, Tommy Waite. Tommy Waite against the man from Cork, Don Hosford. Now, Don Hosford has moved up to this weight division through the bantamweights, formerly as a he boxed at flyweight. And he's been outscoring his man in the opening round for a lot of the time. But you get the feeling all the time that Wade is the one with the punching power. But towards the end of the round, Tommy Wade got through with some good solid blows. One points. Well, perhaps Hosford is shading. There again, Hosford steps inside and scores with a good, accurate right hand to the face. He's scoring well, Hosford. Remember, Wade is always dangerous. Again, Hosford slips in and slips away. Tommy Wade, just a week ago, won the Ulster Championships and was voted the best boxer in the championships. And this would be something of a surprise if Hosford wins this. Experience International, Tommy Wade, the Cairn Lodge Club, in Belfast. A tough, hard hitting banterweight. Getting to get through with a few punches there now in this second round. But Hotsford is the man who's been picking him off well, particularly in the earlier part of each round. Scoring points and scoring them well. We can get a little bit more force behind his right hand cross. There he stops Tommy Wade in his tracks. And this is quite an interesting contest here. A good right hand cross from Hosford. One of the best right hands he's landed in the contest. Jabbing well with the left hand. Well, this is one of the best bouts of the championship so far. Two good banterweights. And for a change there, Tommy Waite is forced to give a little bit of ground as he takes a barrage of good, clean punches there from Hosford. Hosford tightening up his boxing and punching well, keeping his elbows in, punching well. And Waite on the retreat scores with a few good ones. Hosford refuses to give ground. That's a nice move, left to the body, and then whips it up to the head. Oh, well. These are probably the two box best boxers in that weight division, and the pity they had to meet so early, but there's only one more round left, and anything could happen in this one. This is the last round of what's a cracking contest. Don Hosford and Tommy Wade. Tommy Wade, remember, is the champion. Tommy Wade from Belfast, the first of the champions to appear in these championships, and the only one who has to box here tonight. His opponent, Don Hosford from Cork, from the Green Mount Club. Hosford has been boxing better than I've ever seen him before, I think. He must surely be ahead in this last round. So unless something remar remar uh, really remarkable happens in this last round, he's got to win this one. He's in trouble with the headgear there. The last round, the strap seems to be through. too tight for him or something. Wait, he's got a lot of work to do in this last round. He's trying to step up the pace get through this harder punches but Hosford has got to keep cool keep his boxing in control in this last round with Wade chasing him all over the ring Wade is going for him he must feel he's got to do something special in this last round because he's been allowing Hosford to pick him off throughout this contest Hosford has been doing so and Hosford has been in front but in this last round now Wade is beginning to score and score well and Don Hosford a regular here at the National Stadium who's won lots of titles in junior and underage boxing but trying to put a senior title onto his collection now this year and if he beats Wade here and it looks as if he's going to beat him 
he could go all the way through as these would be reckoned by a lot of people as the two best bantamweights in the championships just as it seemed Hosford was beginning to run out of steam he punched back well at the bell well is it going to be the exit of popular champion Tommy White Yes, 21 to 19, close enough in the end, but certainly he won the first couple of rounds. He began to uh, slow down a bit in the last round, but there's a great win for Don Hosford, and out goes the champion, Tommy Waite. Just like that. Still not finding his range properly. It looks a comfortable enough round for Damian McKenna, but he'll have to come forward a little bit more and show a little bit more sparkle in the second round, I would think. There again, he jams out the left hand, and a good right hand. That's more like it. McKenna now, as the bout progresses, looks the more comfortable by far. Evades those swinging wild punches of Martin Murphy's. And Murphy seems to be out of his class here against the far more experience, but there he gets in with the haymaker. And this is the chance all the time. His only way of winning this one is to upset the fluid boxing of Damian McKenna by coming forward. He won't be able to out jab him. He's got to pressurize him if he's to get anywhere in this contest. And he did give McKenna a little bit of a fright just for a few seconds there. But McKenna back to the rhythm of his long range boxing again. Snapping with the left hand. And there's the end of the first round. And a comfortable enough round, I think, I should think, there for Damien McKenna. And there in his corner, former Irish international, his father, Christy McKenna, who trains the boxing club in Drogheda. McKenna now is something like a shadow before him now, fading before those onslaughts. Murphy will still come forward as his only chance here is to break his way through the tamer boxing, but the accurate boxing of McKenna. And McKenna, in the meantime, is picking him off with some good punches. Murphy being urged on from his corner. Perhaps he didn't start early enough in the first round. Is his only way of winning this contest is to come forward. But he's unable to upset the rhythm now, and he's caught with a looping left hand of the chin. And McKenna looks as if he's enjoying himself now in the second round. As the wild onslaught of Martin Murphy goes astray, he comes forward again, trying for all his word to land one big one. Uh, the referee checks him there, and he's slapping with the inside of the glove. That's not going to do him any good. Damien McKenna, the Holy Family Club in Drogheda, one of the most experienced boxers here who hasn't won an Irish senior title as yet. Won plenty of awards in amateur boxing. He's an international boxer. And here he is in his first bout of this year's championships. This will be a good pipe opener, and he's caught with a hard right hand to the body, and that upset him, and this fellow now is going for him in this last round and Murphy beginning to feel more confident in the final round he sank in a good left hand to the body banks home a right hand to the body he's wondering why he didn't try this long ago that left hand is down a bit low but he's giving a good account of himself particularly in this last round lacking in the skills of boxing to a certain extent but at heart he's got plenty of it he's tough and he's giving it a real chance in this last round pressurizing McKenna and McKenna will be quite happy to get this contest over McK McKenna comfortably in front going into this last round but he has suffered a certain amount of discomfort in this last round from the onslaughts and wild swings of Martin Murphy who certainly won't give in right to the final bell He'll keep coming forward. And even McKenna's timing is going a little astray now. Well, Murphy certainly a game boxer all the way through, but surely McKenna must have it won by now but he got a bit of a fright in that last round
Yes, confirmation there. But I'm saying he's glad to get that one over. And on he goes to the next stage of these Irish Senior Championships. Good win for the man from Drogheda. Yes, good win for the man from Drogheda indeed. Mick Dowling, that fight uh, in some ways was a little bit like the first one we saw, in the sense that one boxer builds up a little bit of a lead and then finds he's having to, to defend it. Yeah, well, Martin Murphy had it all to do there going into the last round, and he did hurt Damien McKenna with one good body shot, and that gave him a lot of... And here we have a bout. Dwayne Boxer from Cork, and one from Wexford. The red singlet is Sean or Shawnee Barrett. Shawnee Barrett from Red Lane in Cork. Very well established boxer here in the stadium. Very popular with the crowd here. Josie Breen from Wexford, another crowd pleaser. Breen will go for his man. Right from the word go, I should think. It's Breen there. Moving forward. Southpaw. Sinks in a right hand. Cut, and he's hurt. He's caught with a sinking left hand to the body. Cracking punch. Right, he says he's all right to continue. Barrett is going for him. And it looks as if it's all over in this first round. They ripped him with the left hook to the body. That first one, I think, did a lot of damage. And it's all over. All over indeed. That was short and sweet, McDowling, wasn't it? It was. Uh, again, it was always going to be that way. Both have very, very hard punches. Both win fights inside the distance. We Round one. In the white shorts here, we have Adrian Sheeran from Swinford. Mayo. And from the Loch Gorman Boxing Club is Sean Collier. Sean Collier. Just graduated from intermediate boxing last year. Sheeran, the year before. So Sheeran, an experience as well as has a year's advantage. Won't mean an awful lot now at this day. Sheeran, swing for the Mayo. Collier looks to have a reach advantage here if he'd use it. I don't know if he's going to try. Swings wildly with that right hand. And then lets his whole body crash into his opponent on the shoulder. Fairly good puncher, has indeed in each of these boxes. Kanya looks to have a good left hand. It's a good bit of movement into it. Every so often he hooks up that left hand and it looks dangerous. There again he stands his ground and let's go with one, two good punches. These are heavy hit hitters here. Sheeran trying to bustle his man here. It's probably the best thing because if he gives this man leverage to use that left hand, that looping left hand, he'd be in trouble. He's got to keep moving inside, Sharon. He used to win this one, I think. I know it's dangerous, but that's probably the right place to be. Collier looks useful and he loops with that hooking left. Hooks again, this time into the ribs. And as the bout goes on, particularly in this last round, Sheeran is taking control. Looking the more comfortable of the two, slipping in, scoring with the odd one, and then fading away. There's been a good display by Collier. 
Just perhaps not quite ready yet. Oh, no, no, we'll see him again in senior boxing. Takes a barrage of blows. And Sheridan looks as if he's going to finish well on this round. Oh, and there out of the blue is a big right hand from Collier. Oh, he loses balance more than he does, but that takes a lot out of him, man. Well, you can never look, and he cracks a right hand on the chin. And this could be the turn up. There's not enough time left. Because there's no doubt about it, he's behind on points. But now he's got to go for his man. His confidence was almost gone for some reason in that last round. And then all of a sudden, it came back to him. But why he became so lethargic in the middle of the bout, I don't know, because he was doing well on the opening round. And then coming to the bell, almost stopped his man. But I doubt if it's enough. Say it all there, clear cut win. Despite the fact that he had a close call coming to the final bell, so he goes into the next stage of these championships. Yes, good win for Sheeran there, and uh, indeed for Swinford. But Mick Dowling. Hello and you're very welcome to our boxing special here on Network 2. The national championships have been taking place this evening just across the south side of the city from us here at Montrose. Twelve titles down for decision during the course of the evening at the National Stadium and we'll be bringing you the best of the action from the finals over the next 50 minutes or so. Uh, joining me in studio is Mick Dowling who has been watching the contests which have taken place so far and we'll be getting his comments as the programme goes on. But first, though, let's get straight to the business of the night. Now, the first final that we're going to see is the bantamweight contest between Willie Valentine from the St. Saviour's Club in Dublin against Corkman Don Hosford. We pick up the fight in the second round, and our commentator is Noel Andrews. Well, it's the start of the second round of this contest at bantamweight. Don Hosford from Cork in the white shorts, and Willie Valentine from Dublin from the St. Saviour's Club. Close enough contest, and a contrast in style here with Valentine doing all the... Pressurizing in the opening round. Willie Valentine, age 22, a jockey, now a boxer. Tonight, going for the Irish senior title against a man who's tried for it three times before, Don Hosford. He's been beaten each time by the same man, beaten by Damon Kelly at flyweight, but he's moved up a weight division and seems to have improved a lot. Don Hosford beat the reigning champion at bantamweight, Tommy Waite, last weekend. Now, if he can keep his boxing tidy, he could win this one. But Valentine is going to carry the fight to him all the way through. The opening round, he's been chasing Hosford all around the ring and landing with a few big swinging punches. Hosford hasn't been able to slow down the pace. He'd like it a little slower. He wants to hold him at the end of that left-hand jab. Tries again, but the bustling style of Valentine is paying dividends in this fight so far. Big, wild right hand, swinging with the left hand. He'll throw them from any angle, and with either hand. Valentine, who looked earlier as a good counter-puncher. But here, he's making the initiative all the way through. He's the one to start the onslaughts. That seems to be the plan. And so far, it's working reasonably well for him. Inside, Hosford scores with a good one. There's Hosford again, scoring with a good left-hand jab. But quickly, Valentine is back again to push him back. Now Hosford is the one who's counter-punching, fading before his man and countering well. Now can Valentine keep up the bustling style he started with in the opening round? Got a bit of damage there, the referee having a close look. Oh, he's satisfied. Again, he pushes back Hosford. Hosford from Cork, Valentine from Dublin. A 
And those looping punches again from Valentin, from Valentine get through that looping left hand and another crashing left hand to the chin. Well, Hosford hasn't been able to settle down the way he'd like to in this contest. He likes the pace a little cooler. He likes to strike well with those clean punches like that one left and right hand. Two good clean punches. Valentine, a little bit more unorthodox and wild with his punches, but very often getting through with good ones. And there's the end of the second round. And Hosford beginning to find his way through in this contest. That was a better second round for him. Well, it's the third and last round, and this could be the deciding round of a good, fast-moving contest here. A bit scrappy in the opening round. Valentine may have shaded it. That's Valentine in the dark shorts from Dublin, St. Saviour's Boxing Club. Hosford coming back quite well in the second round. And the referee is having a look at some damage there. Is it? He's calling for the doctor. The difficulty with, since the headgear was introduced, we don't always see these injuries. And he's calling for a closer inspection there. There seems to be a bit of damage to Willie Valentine. Says everything is all right. Off we go in this last round. Now, Hosford prefers this pace to stay a little bit more lethargic so he can pick his man off with that left-hand jab and straight punches. And there he whips out a good straight left hand to the face. Valentine, bustling style, all the time carrying the fight to his man. Leads with either hand, the left or the right. And it's been doing well for him throughout this contest. Hosford from the Greenmount Club in Cork. Will it be fourth time lucky? Beaten three times in these championships. Here he is on his fourth attempt to become champion. Back up against the ropes now, entirely somewhat, I think, as Valentine puts on a bit of pressure. Valentine almost throughout is coming forward, making the fight, keeping the pace. Up at a high level. Pause out the left hand, a big wild right hand. And Hosford flounders somewhat as he comes forward there. He's not getting the punching power into those blows in this last round. And Valentine, tough as they come. He's staying the distance re really well in this contest. Makes his man miss. Chops in with a good blow. So Hosford, who beat the champion last weekend Tommy wait that would have made him favorite but is he gonna make it loops in a good right hand of the chin getting a bit untidy and scrambling now in this last round Osford tries to come forward scores with the right takes a left hand on the face Again, Valentine picks him off as Hosford comes forward. Then Hosford pins him down with a good left hand. Good clean punches again from Hosford. He's a cleaner puncher, but is it often enough? And they're really out on their feet now in this final round. And there it is, it's all over. Who's going to be champion? At Bantamweight, a cracking last round. It really developed into quite a contest, that one. Well, he spends the greater part of his time riding out for the Michael Conn stable on such notables as Koyunga, but tonight he's the Irish Bantamweight champion, and it is indeed Willie Valentine McDowling. Yes, Michael, I feel a bit sorry for Dan Hosford, but I think, uh, if you remember last week, we were talking about the strength and, and so on, and here he's moved up last year from flyweight up to bantamweight. As a flyweight, he was never very strong. I always felt he was going to have problems as a bantam. Valentine is a very strong little fighter, and I'm sure from his horse riding and so on, he's got very strong shoulders, very strong arms, mm -hmm. and I think he set out the right type of fight tonight to pressure Don Hosford. Don needs a bit of space. He needs room to do his nice, skillful boxing. Willie Valentine wasn't having any of that. He kept cutting him off and kept winging in good shots. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, the fact that Hosford had beaten the defending champion, as was pointed out in the commentary, he had to have felt he was favourite. 
Well, I'm not so sure because uh, Damien McKenna is a very good fighter and Valentine beat him mm -hmm. in the semi-final. McKenna is a very skillful fighter and Valentine knew how to cut him off. And Willie Valentine's got a very good coach, of course, John McCormick looking after him. And uh, they had it well sussed out as to how they were going to beat Don Hosford, which was to stay on top of him, throwing lots of punches, never giving Hosford a chance. Yeah. I feel sorry for Don, but I'm very glad for Willie Valentine. Mm -hmm. This uh, particular contest had a particular relevance for yourself, Mick, because 20 years ago you won that bantamweight title for the last time in actual fact. <laughs> yes, I, I started actually winning those titles in 1968 and won eight of them, of course, right through to 75. Yeah. So it's only just now I realise that it is uh, 20 years since I've retired. That's right. Nothing has changed, only the hair. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll talk to you later, Mick. But uh, now we're going to move on to the next contest on the card in which Damien Kelly from Holy Trinity Belfast defended his flyweight title against Brendan Walsh from the Darndale Club. Now, the first round was a pretty tame affair, so we pick it up in round two with Noel Andrews again. Walsh has been trying to draw this man onto his counter, but I think uh, Damien Kelly is a little bit too wise for that. Lane close, a lot of spoiling and holding there. There are only three entries altogether at flyweight. I don't know if Damon Kelly frightened them all away or not. So there's only been one contest last weekend when we saw Brendan Walsh, and he looked good in beating Mitchell Wells from Belfast. That's a good, useful left hand there. Oh, and he's cut. And there's his count. Just he landed one good one. A good counterpunch there from Damon Kelly. There's a count of eight. Kelly beginning to find his range now. He's been moving fairly coolly in this contest. As soon as Walsh went from there and opened up and cut him with a few good ones, good counterpunch from Kelly, and Kelly able to reply and dumping him on the floor. And Kelly now finding his range in this last round. And Walsh, I think, will have to wait for another year to win these championships. He has boxed internationally. He boxed uh, for Ireland against Scotland. And he's still, as well, only learning his trade against far more experienced Damon Kelly. Kelly, who's been an international now for the last three, four years. And to quite a number of people, pound for pound, the best boxer in the country. It looks this last round as if he's going to hold on to his title but he's had to fight all the way against a game boxer in Brendan Walsh Walsh has made a fight of it all the way through and there it is it's all over and we just have to await the decision of the judges a fairly good display from Brendan Walsh there from Darndale against the reigning champion Damon Kelly That's how they work it all, the red corner and the blue corner, by pressing the button on the computer. The winner of that contest is 60 and 5, and the Maxwell National Senior Champion at Flyweight, and the holder of the Cairns Perpetual Challenge Cup, in the red corner, Kelly. Yes, he's champion once again. And Walsh will have to wait for another year, and what a good champion he is too. Damon Kelly from the Holy Trinity and Club in Belfast. Yes, no change at the top of the tree in the flyweight division. Then Damien Kelly, as expected, retaining his national title. And that one went uh, as uh, we would have predicted it to go, Mick. Yes, it was always an uphill struggle for y young, uh, young Brendan Walsh. Mm -hmm. He was always going to find it difficult. Kelly's very, very experienced, very smart boxer, very well coached by the Hawkins brothers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel that he was a little bit negative. Young Walsh was a little mm -hmm. bit negative, southpaw. But uh, we did pick out a little spot here where he gets nailed actually by the classical right hand counter against the southpaw. Yes, let's take a look at that uh, first then because this is the knockdown that we actually saw uh, just at the early, earlier part of the tape here. Yeah, young, young Walsh is coming right in here. Oh, He more fe fell over a little bit. Yeah, well, that one, that, that one is a slip, yes, but, but you will see 
the right hand is going to land now and he gets he gets nailed, goes down for count. But here we are, we're actually looking at a lot of holding. Yes. Yeah, we didn't actually see the knockdown here, Michael. What we're seeing here now is Brendan Walsh getting worn for holding. And this certainly cost him two points. You remember during the Olympic yeah, Games, right, it used yeah. to be three. They have reduced that to two points now. Well, we didn't see the knockdown there. But however, uh, he got docked two points yeah. for that holding there. And, mm -hmm. that's, and that's not that's good for sure. him. Yes, not sure. good at all. Yeah. OK, Mick, uh, with bout number three on the bill tonight, involved Glenn Stevens from Crumlin, who was up against Martin Renahan from the St. Patrick's Club in Keedy. Now, this one was for the lightweight title, and we join it in round two. Second round of this contest here, the champion Glenn Stevens on a right southpaw. He opened the first round by leading with his left hand, but now he switched around to lead with the right hand. Glenn Stevens from the Crumlin Club in Dublin. Marty Renahan is from County Armagh. Very promising boxer. Tried last year and lost to Eddie Bulger, but this time he stopped Bulger in the semi-finals. So he's in real cracking form, Marty Renahan. Only two weeks ago was Ulster champion for the second time. Stevens determined to hold on to his senior title. Good puncher, particularly on the counter punch, making his man. Well, in the opening round, Renahan was trying to get Stevens to come forward. Stevens likes to wait for them to come run on to those blows. Stevens really works well on the retreat, turning his man. And this annoys Renahan because Renahan would like his man to come forward. That is up to Renahan to go chasing after Stevens now, it seems, in this contest. Again on the retreat, Stevens fades before him, then counters well with the left hand. He's trying to slow down the pace. Stevens likes it a little bit slower. Where he can pick up his man as he, and cash in on every mistake that Renahan may make. Marty Renahan, in winning the intermediates a few years ago, was voted the best boxer of the championships. Checked for holding there. List the second round. Referee calls for quiet in the corner. And this is not all that easy to separate these boys. They're counting on each other to make mistakes. Renahan makes the mistake. And Stevens counters. This is what Stevens is best at, moving on the retreat and countering well. Looking for the openings, turning his man into the ropes. Renahan will chase after him. It's his only chance of victory here. And again, Stevens picks him off. This is a good round for Glenn Stevens, this second round. And there's the end of the second round. And he's almost frustrated as he goes back to his corner, Renahan. But Stevens, with Phil Sutcliffe in his corner there, I think he must feel a little bit happier in that second round. Marty Renahan, a little frustrated. He'll come forward all the time. It's his only chance of winning. Well, it's the last round of a fairly cracking contest. Close enough too, though Stevens had a good second round. Maybe edging in front now. That's Stevens from Trumbland, the reigning champion in red. His opponent from Katie and Armagh, Martin Renahan. Now Renahan has got to come forward in this last round and swarm all over his opponent, I would think, in this final round. Stevens wants plenty of space behind him so he can maneuver around the ring and score with his counter punches. A 
It's been an interesting contest all the way through. Oh, there again, clean shots from Glenn Stevens in this last round. Jack for doing a bit of holding. Tries to thump him, but somehow with the inside of the glove this time. Brennan still shuffling forward. Stevens turns him once again with one clean shot. Stevens boxing as a southpaw now. Then turns once again. But it's spoiling and holding again going on there. Stevens will want to watch that he's not warned for holding. He's been checked a couple of times by the referee. Good strong puncher, Stevens. Renahan hasn't really settled down. In the final minute of this contest now, will Stevens hold on to his title as lightweight champion of Ireland? Two good clean shots there from Stevens. And Renahan still bustling forward. Stealing points, picks him off and then fades away. Very popular boxer here in the stadium, Ben Stevens, of course, from the Crumlin Club, not too far away from the National Stadium. One, two good clean shots there. And Renahan's timing going a little astray now in this last round, and there's the bell. A good finish to that round by Glenn Stevens. That looks as if he may be champion once again. A good, hard battle all the way through. Yeah, so that was the best contest of the night so far. And uh, the right result, McDowell, do you think, going to Stevens? Oh, indeed, Michael. Uh, Stevens just won by five points, but I'm surprised it was even that close. I thought mm. Stevens was a much clearer winner. You know, Marty Renahan is a very good fighter. Uh, Commonwealth Games silver medalist, but Stevens made him look quite ordinary there tonight. Stevens gave a beautiful display of what good southpaw boxing is all about, and he reminds me very much of, of Paul Griffin, of course. Yeah. Anticipates the opponent very well, gets the right distance away from his opponent, just makes him miss, clips in lovely shots, whether it's with the right hand or with the left. And he, he gave a fabulous display there, and uh, ideal for any young boxer learning uh, the, the real skills, yes. especially of southpaw boxing. Yeah. We've highlighted, in actual fact, one or two of those skills that you've mentioned uh, from Stevens. Noel Andrews made that commentary as well, uh, or point in his commentary, you know, getting in and then fading away. Yes, well, there, just as uh, we came onto there, he was in the corner, Renahan came at him, he just slipped right under, made Renahan miss. There he goes in with one, two, hooks again, moves away. Renahan struggling to get near. As you can see, Renahan's punches are just not getting on target at all. Glenn Stevens has learned his boxing really well, Michael, and he's, you know, as I said, he gets the distance correct and he has very quick reflexes. Mm -hmm. He's got a good boxing brain, in other words, and sure. well-deserving winner there tonight. Yeah, good boxer, good boxer indeed. OK, on that note, we take a commercial break. Now, still plenty more, of course, to come uh, from tonight's National Boxing Championships here in Dublin, so join us again in a few moments. Coverage of the National Boxing Championships coming to you from the National Boxing Stadium here in Dublin. Well, now, fight number four on the bill tonight was the battle for the light welterweight title between defending champion Billy Walsh and Glenn McLarnan from Lurgan. And this turned out to be quite a contest as we pick it up with Noel Andrews in round two. Second round at light welterweight. Two very hard punchers here. The champion Billy Walsh. Has he met his match in punching power with McLaren because McLaren is a heavy puncher and he's only 19 and he's in his first senior championship and he's taken the best that Walsh had to offer and he didn't give an inch. Walsh perhaps a shade in front after that first round but not comfortably in front. McLaren is still dangerous. McLaren who failed to win the Ulster title 
And here he is in the final of the national title. He takes it left hook to the body. Was pressurizing. Throws the punches from all angles. Never stops. Keeps flowing in with blows. Showering them on his opponent. Only if a small percentage gets through, they'll do an awful lot of damage. McConnell himself. Good puncher. But Walsh can certainly take them. Walsh, one of the most popular boxers here in the National Stadium. One of the great highlights was the night here when he beat the American champion. Whips in a cracking left hand to the face. He got the power behind the, that one. Tuds away every so often with that left hook to the body. Misses with a lot of them. McLaren steps inside and scores quite well. One well, McLaren standing up to them, but for how long? Billy Walsh, baby face Billy Walsh, still throwing out the leather for all his work. McLaren bleeding from the nose now, beginning to look a sorry sight in the second round. He's a tough one, McLaren. We'll be seeing him again, I should think. Finds his range there and counters well with two good clean punches to Walsh's face. Not a promise to be a good bout this, and certainly it's working out to be. Looked for a while as if McLaren was beginning to crack, but he's still in the fight. He's coming back somewhat. There he takes a hard right hand again and fights back. And a good right hand. And there's a standing count for Walsh. And this is quite a turn up. Walsh disappointed, but it was a good cracking right hand on the chin. Now, is this contest going to turn right around? McLaren cut him with a looping right hand of the chin, a beautiful punch at the end of the second round. And now we're into quite a battle with one more round to go. And a bewildered Billy Walsh back to his corner, just as it seemed he was getting right on top of the contest. And here's the surprise packet, Glenn McLaren, only 19 from Lurgan. Well, it's the final round of a contest that's turning out to be quite a cracker, this one. Glenn McLaren, young Glenn McLaren from Clown Air and Boxing Club in Lurgan against the reigning champion Billy Walsh. Walsh looked as if he was taking control of the second round, but was caught with a really hard right hand on the chin by McLaren and had to take a standing count of eight. So a different McLaren is coming out for this last round. His confidence renewed. He's going to try and carry the fight to his man in this last round. Loses the gum shield. Referee brings him over there to rinse it out, replace the gum shield. Now has McLaren running out of steam in this last round. Walsh is really going for him now in this last round. Billy Walsh from Cork. McLaren from Lurgan. And Walsh, remember, is the champion. And McLaren again gets back with two good cracking punches, a lovely left hand. There's no doubt about it, this fellow McLaren is making a fight of it. He's staying the pace remarkably well. Looked as if he was tiring midway through the second round and then came back and really hurt Walsh. <laughs> Billy Walsh not offering an awful lot of defense, leaving himself wide open to that looping left hand. McLaren being urged on by his corner there. He's got to really dig into the depths. Yes, he's been in a grueling battle. He's taken a lot of hard punches from Walsh. Walsh, one of the heaviest punchers in amateur boxing. McLaren has proved he's able to take them. Not only that, but able to hit back just as hard. Less than a minute to go. And this decider. The light welterweight title 
the champion Billy Walsh from Cork and this very promising young challenger only 19 from Glenn McLaren from Lurgan created quite an upset in the second round by hurting Walsh and forcing Walsh to take a count of eight when he collects himself he gets through with some good punches he's got a very good left hook to the chin but Walsh has been putting on the pressure throughout running out of steam in this last round referee calling for quiet in the corner and again it's tit for tat in that exchange Walsh sinks in that left hook to the body time running out now check the holding and there it is it's all over and that was some battle all the way through two very hard punchers in a very hard contest well at one stage of the contest it looked as if he was going to fade altogether but at the end of the second round he came back and really surprised Walsh by catching him with that big right hand on the chin. Here's this tough man. Champion. Became champion last year after being runner-up the year before. Born in America, actually. Billy Walsh, Cork. champion the holder of the Prince Ali Camp Perpetual Challenge Cup in the blue corner and McClanahan wins it his more accurate punches there and that big second round of his the cleaner hitter and the pressure of Billy Walsh just didn't work so there's a new star in amateur boxing at late welterweight in Glenn McClanahan and disappointment for Billy Walsh of Cork and what has been an exciting contest all the way through Yes, a turn up for the books there. A great night for young Glenn McLaren. Well, McDowling is still with us and enjoying tonight's action. And you were impressed last Saturday on Sports Stadium with McLaren when you saw him in the earlier rounds. I was very impressed because I'd seen him in the National Intermediate Championships too. It was the first time I, he came to my notice. And I, I was impressed because he demolished one of my own fighters <laughs> in the semi-final, I think it was. I, I was very impressed with him then because he'd have a great left hook, Mike. A very, very good left mm -hmm. hook. Very, very fit, very strong fast reflexes so it wasn't that huge of an upset there yeah. certainly not to me here and um, Billy Walsh made the the, the 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 classical mistakes really of the defender going off field trying to score and letting the forward run in behind him and score put the yes. ball in the back of the net and yet at the same time McLaren could have gone for a sleep himself in one of the earlier rounds it's certainly in the second round Billy Walsh was having a great round but mm. then McLaren came back with some Brilliant bursts of punches, very yeah. good, very accurate punches. Billy's mistake was sticking the chin up in the air, and he knows well, and his dad knows that coaches him. That's been his downfall all along. You yeah. you have no use concentrating yeah, on landing, you've got to defend as well. Yeah, like obviously Billy would be disappointed tonight, but he really can't have too many complaints. No, I think that the decision was fair enough, in and he most certainly won't have. Well, you, you, you'll see here where he leaves his chin really sticking up in the air. Right there he's up in there. Is McLaren's back. left hook, one, two, big right hand, big left hook, and Billy gets a count. Mm. Leaves the chin sticking up in the air all right, and you just can't afford to do that against a big puncher like Glenn McLaren. Yeah. Yeah. Referee was nearly taking a count himself there in the middle of that. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the welterweight division where Neil Goff defended his title against another Neil. This was Neil Sinclair boxing out of the Holy Family Club in Belfast. Jerry Story sending his boxer out for the second round. Neil Sinclair from Belfast and the reigning champion Neil Goff. Goff from Waterford. Tame enough opening round. Remember, it's a repeat of last year when Goff only won by a single point. Sinclair has been trying to pick his man off at long range with good clean punches and has succeeded from time to time. And that snappy left hand straight from the shoulder. 
Goff will want to step up the pace a little bit more. A good two-handed puncher, Goff. Won his first title here from four years ago, and then it was a bit of a break, and then came back and won him again. The reigning champion. All-Ireland Youth Champion several times, as indeed was Neil Sinclair. Sinclair, most of his uh, top-class boxing or international boxing has been underage boxing. Won a bronze medal in the World Juniors in uh, Canada a couple of years ago. Sinclair picking him off again there, but a good reply from Goff. Sinclair is finding his range well. Contrast here in style. Sinclair trying to keep this at long range. Scores again freely with a good left hand to the chin. Goff doesn't look quite so happy in the second round. Again, Sinclair steals a point, then fades before his man. So the champion will want to step up a gear here, I think. He used to hold on to his title. That's a little bit better. Scores well with a good left hand of the face. A bit dangerous the way he drops his head there. And Sinclair again with that left hand jab almost continuously in Goff's face. Goff always dangerous, but of the two, Sinclair looks slightly the more comfortable now in this second round. Working off that jab, that cracking left hand. Jumps him over. And this certainly will upset the morale of Neil Goff from Waterford. And there's a big surprise. It didn't look such a great punch. But it certainly did the damage. He lost his balance completely. He was dumped on the floor. So it's real trouble now for the champion, Neil Goff, with one more round left. Well, it's the last round. I wonder are we looking at a new champion here, Neil Sinclair from Belfast in blue. Oh, and we a hold up here. Some trouble with the glove. A lace or bandage peeping out from underneath, I think. Off we go for this last round. Sinclair looking very comfortable in the second round. Goff with a lot of work to do in this last round. But Goff's the sort of boxer who'll go right to the end. But Sinclair is cool and clean and accurate with those long punches. Goff has got to brush them aside and get inside to do some hard work. But he's finding it almost impossible to get beyond those long punches. Sinclair using the, the ring well, dominating the center of the ring almost throughout. And keeping his man at the end of that left-hand job. And there's trouble again for the headgear of Neil Goff. Consist consistently giving him trouble in the opening round. And there once again, we've got to do some repair work. And it's loose at the back there, I think. Yes, he's to clip that in. Time taken off and allowed for it. that stoppage. Three three-minute rounds. We're in the last three-minute round now. And Goff not too happy. I don't think it's only the headgear that's been worrying him. Sinclair has been picking him off. A good, that's more like it now from Goff. Loops him with two good looping punches. He may have to do a little bit more than that in this last round.
Goff, does he feel the title slipping away from him now? Oh, a good left hand, right hand from Goff. And support from the crowd. Trying to pull this fight out of the fire, as it were, now in this last round. Loops in again, crashes home a good looping left hand. His only way of winning this is to carry the fight to Sinclair and try and upset the rhythm of Sinclair, because Sinclair has been settling down and picking his man off quite well. Goff has got to chase him now. Has he enough time left? Or into the last minute. Bit of holding and spoiling there. And again, a good left hand. He's having a good la last round now, Goff. The crowd urging him on. Very popular boxer here in the stadium. He's been here so often for internationals. Neil Goff from Waterford. Trying to hold on to his title. Sinclair, if he doesn't win it this time, he's certainly going to win it sometime because a very promising boxer. Well, Goff's got, not going to give in easily, and there's the bell. A good finish for Goff in the end. Whether it's enough or not remains to be seen because Sinclair had a cracking second round. The winner of that contest, 15 points to nine, and the Maxwell National Senior Champion at Welterweight, and the holder of the Welterweight Perpetual Challenge Trophy in the blue corner is Sinclair. Yes, we have a new champion. Hail the new champion, Neil Sinclair from Belfast. Beating Neil Goff from Waterford. Yes, well, in fact, a second contest in a row then to produce a new champion and well deserved indeed, McDowling. Yes, Goff beat him last year by one single point. Very, very tight decision, yeah. but there was no doubt about it at all tonight. Sinclair started very well, landing good long punches in the very first round. Big long right hands were landing on Neil Goff's chin mm -hmm. from early on. Mm -hmm. Sinclair then started getting in with good left hooks as well. So Neil was, I, I felt from the first round, was climbing an uphill battle. Yes, I mean, very much even in the third round, uh, when Goff was, was very much trying to make the fight back, he just couldn't make up enough ground, if any ground indeed. Yeah, he was, he was most certainly well behind going into the last round, uh, but he had a, a good last round, put everything into it, very experienced fighter, mm -hmm. knew he had it all to do and tried to do it. But Sinclair, of course, has a gold medal now from the uh, Commonwealth Games, yes. but uh, Neil Goff would be quick to remind us he has won from the multi-nation tournament in Liverpool last sure. year, where he won the Best Boxer Award as well. Yeah, one thing that just struck me about this contest, in the first round in particular, Neil Goff had a lot of trouble with his headgear. Would something like that have put him off on the night? It most certainly would. He had a huge amount of trouble with the headgear, and uh, it amazes me why coaches and boxers cannot have their headgear settled properly. Mm -hmm. There, there, there should be no excuse for it because they should know if there's a problem with the headgear, if Velcro is wearing on it. Velcro, if it's Velcro, and it wasn't Velcro in that particular case there, but say on the top 10 headgear, sometimes Velcro wears. It's got sure. to be replaced and can be replaced. But I would feel that that most certainly put Neil Goff off in the first round and he was several points behind. Yeah, we have to give them the benefit of the doubt. A headgear or a strap may have broken or something like that, but one certainly felt that this was, was not a help to his cause. He had serious trouble with it, and my advice to coaches would be, and boxers, make absolutely sure your headgear is solid and firm before you go in. OK, well now we're going to move on to some of the heavier hitters of the night. This is the middleweight bout for the All-Ireland title. It's Dennis Galvin, the title holder, against a newcomer to the finals, Brian McGee from Belfast. And we join this one in round three. This is the last lap, as it were, for the middleweight title. The champion is Dennis Galvin. That's him in red. And the challenger, Brian McGee, from the Holy Trinity Club in Belfast. Contest that a lot of people thought would have been a bit one sided, but certainly Galvin is not having it all his own way. In fact, he has hurt. He's hurt Galvin a few times, but now he shows he's been caught with a big one there in a standing count. But it indicates he's all right. But Galvin going for the big punch now in this last round because he's got to put the work in here because he's not winning by all that much if he is in front, even. As McGee has been stealing points every so often here. Galvin has got to really shake himself in this last round. Going for fifth national title. Great international record. Bit unfortunate not to have made the Olympic team the last time. Just missed qualification. 
And he'll try again, I suppose, next year if he holds on to his title here. McGee has given him a handful earlier on on the bout. Now a bit of holding as they tire in this last round. Good, solid right hand of the face from McGee. Both boxers out on their feet in this last round. They look tired, weary. Dennis Calvin, a good all-round athlete, a high jumper in his earlier years, and a good one at that. But it's all boxing for him of late. Dedicated to boxing. And this would be quite an upset if he doesn't hold on to his title. Yeah, a couple of years ago, he lost it to Danny Ryan, but he quickly came back and won it last year. And into the last minute, the strong, hard-punching Dennis Galvin has met a man who can take his best punches. And McGee himself, dangerous all the way through, lacking this level of experience. A promising, good, hard-hitting southpaw is Brian McGee. McGee again scores with a good right hand to the face. Well, this fellow's been able to walk through those punches. And that's it. Cracking last round there. They gave it everything. And there was a lot of heavy punches landed throughout in that contest. There certainly was indeed the decision going in that one uh, to Brian McGee from Holy Trinity and Mick Dowling yet again the decision going against the defending champion. Yes, uh, not a huge surprise. You know, mm. Brian McGee has been around a little bit. He's come right up to the juvenile ranks and is a very good, classy boxer. And the difference between him here, Michael, was uh, Galvin was too wild, a lot of huff and puff, but way off target all mm -hmm. the time. McGee kept his composure, picked off some nice, good, clean counter punches, and this worked very well for him on the computer. Mm -hmm. All right, Mick, well, the uh, next contest, we weren't going to have a look at this one tonight. It was the light flyweight between Jimmy Pryor and uh, Colin Moffat. Jimmy Pryor won that one. But we're going to move on to the featherweight contest, and the uh, contest for the title here was between Adrian Patterson from Katie, again, another boxer from Katie, and Terry Carlisle from the Sacred Heart Club. We're going to join this one in the final round. <laughs> Well, we're into the last round of this contest. This is the featherweights, featherweight bout. And the final here has been decided between Adrian Patterson in red. He's from the St. Patrick's Boxing Club in Newry. And from Dublin is Terry Carlisle. Hard enough contest, but been spo uh, spoiled a bit every so often by a um, bit of holding of the ring close. And that's a good, clean right hand from Patterson. That's the pattern of the contest all the time. He's been picking his man off from long range with a good, long right hand. And Carlisle hasn't really settled down all that well. These are two boxers, each with a great record in underage boxing, and only in senior boxing for the last 12 months or so. Patterson tried for this title last year and was beaten by Paul Griffin. Paul Griffin was the holder of this title and our number one for a number of years, but now he's gone professional. Sadly missed from the championships this year. Well, this fellow Patterson looks promising, as indeed does Carlisle. Patterson, a little bit more accurate with his punches here. Feel all the time that Carlisle didn't really settle into the contest the way he'd like to. He's finding it difficult to get beyond that southpaw right hand of Patterson. Patterson, 2019, as indeed is Terry Carlisle. Each were gold medalist in the uh, Gaelic Games a few years ago. So there's a wealth of experience behind them here.
the last minute. And who's going to take over the mantle from Paul Griffin? Who's going to be our featherweight champion? And remember, this is a pre-Olympic year, so they'll have to be thinking in terms of Olympic Games pretty soon, these boxers. And certainly it's been a good display. Patterson has been accurate with that right hand. You feel all the time that Carlisle never really settled down where he'd like to. Patterson, tall and a bit awkward at times. But again, the boxing becoming untidy in this last round. They get tied up in each other. And that's it. All right, well, the result there in the end going to Adrian Patterson, who in actual fact is from the St. Patrick's Club in Newry, I think uh, I said Katie a little bit earlier on. What about that one, Mick? And the newcomer is Kirk, and has a cracking right hand. That's been on the cards all the way through, a big right hand on the chin. And Joyce in a bit of trouble now in the second, uh, second round. Kirk is the punching man here. Gordon himself, no mean puncher. He's won a lot of bouts inside the distance. But Kirk is extra special as far as punching power is concerned. And it's anybody's battle down this last round. Jo Joyce is certainly not going to give in easily. He's going to come forward all the way through. But Kirk is the more accurate puncher with that big right hand if he can get through with the, one of those big punches. But all the time busy is Gordon Joyce from the Sunnyside Club in Cork. Joyce swarming all over his man. This fellow Kirk has improved a lot in the last 12 months. Joyce, remember, beat him in these same championships last year, but he's having a harder time this time. Kirk, one of the stars of the future, I should think, in amateur boxing. A great puncher. Referee calling for quiet air in Joyce's corner. Loses balance. They box on in this last round. Now is the title to go to Belfast or down to Cork? Gordon Joyce. Keeping the family flag flying here. Wonder will this be his last championship? As he's had a very busy career for the last 10 years or so in senior boxing. Gordon Joyce, normally in a lighter uh, weight division, but the last year or so he moved up to light heavyweight. Takes a cracking right hand on the chin. Still won't give any ground. Punches away to the body. as it were now in a grueling contest a good left hand from Gordon Joyce now can he hold on to his title Kirk bleeding badly from the nose it seems takes a hand left hand of the face the crowds really enjoying this battle neither prepared to give quarter and this has been something of a punch up at light heavyweight Kirk cracks home a big right hand Joyce still won't come down. He's going to go right to the bell, punching away to the body, sinks in a good right hand. Well, that's it. Thoroughly enjoyed by everybody here in the National Stadium. The final at light heavyweight. Two gallant warriors. The winner of that contest, 15-11. And the Maxwell National Senior Champion at Light Heavyweight and the holder of the Meredith and Company Perpetual Challenge Cup in the blue corner of Kirk. Yes, we have a new champion. Stephen Kirk is champion at Light Heavyweight. And what a promising boxer.
And it's farewell to him for this year. As far as the championships are concerned, Gordon Joyce, he's had a great career. It may be the end of his career, we don't know. But he's had about 10 years in senior boxing and great success. Well, it's the final, final round of a fairly interesting light flyweight contest here. Jimmy Pryor from the Darndale Club in red here and Colin Moffat from Belfast. Jimmy Pryor has been runner-up in these championships for the last two years. In fact, uh, last year, on his way to the final, he beat this same Colin Moffat in the semi-finals. Moffat seems to have improved a bit since then, but uh, Pryor is dictating the pace of this contest here. Scoring quite freely with a big left hand, but missing his wild right. Moffat fairly accurate at times in close. He had to find his range reasonably well in the second round. But Pryor perhaps in front now in this last round. But Moffat, a tidy boxer. Now he gets through one, two, three, four punches in a row there from Moffat and no real reply from Pryor. Now it's Pryor running out of steam in this last round because Moffat is stepping up the pace here and coming to his man and beginning to score. Moffat has been tame enough earlier on in the contest allowing Pryor to make all the first moves. But Moffat's starting this round by going for his man, but whether he's able to or not to keep it up or not is something else. Pryor is a strong one. Colin Moffat, reigning Ulster senior champion. In fact, he's won the Ulster title three times and also boxed in the Commonwealth Games. And he's putting in a great last round. He's the one that's coming forward now and scores with a big left hand, and he hurts Jimmy Pryor. Pryor, who seemed to be dominating the contest in the earlier part now, is he running out of steam now in this last round as Moffat comes forward. Jimmy Pryor, very popular with the stadium crowd here. He's had some great international appearances here in the stadium. Last year, in fact, he won against the United States here. Currently looked upon as our number one flyweight, with Moffat trying to dethrone him here and take the title. And this is a great round for Colin Moffat this last round. Pryor trying to fight back. This has been a great finish. It's quite an entertaining contest at light flyweight. Jimmy Pryor trying for the third time to win this title. And the Maxwell National Senior Champion at light flyweight. And the holder of the Nat Fishman Perpetual Challenge Cup in the red corner. Well, there you are. He's won it on his third attempt. Great win for Jimmy Pryor. A good contest, disappointment on the face of Colin Moffat there. It was a good bout all the way through there, particularly that last round, Moffat almost snatched it. But a great lead was built up by Jimmy Pryor, and he's the champion.